Good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode here at Wildman Lifts. I'm your host, Wildman. Now, on today's episode, we're continuing to train the carnivore in the gym, doing five times five in giant set format. On today's menu is going to be something that the carnivore hasn't done before. It's called the push press. Now, let's pop in and let's see what we got on the menu today. So on today's venue, we're doing a different kind of a movement that Frank hasn't done before. It's called the push press. Now, essentially, he's been pressing from a seated position, so he's able to get that leverage from a bench. But because of this movement, you have to use your legs and you have to use your whole body. So that's a different kind of a movement. And this is our mutual buddy. Uh, this is Nelson. So Nelson's been in a couple of my videos before, mainly for comedic relief. He's mainly been sleeping in the background or dancing in the background, but he decided to give this giant set a try today. And speaking of the giant set, we're going to be doing the push press and we're also going to be doing some wild man flags. This is a great exercise to do for core stability and for timing. And Nelson is going to be doing the exact same workout as Frank is today. So he's giving the entire strength giant set a shot. I think he did the whole entire workout with us. And after wild man flags, we're gonna be doing some farmer walks with the dumbbells. This is a great exercise I like to do on overhead press day, mainly because we're working the polar antagonistic muscles, meaning we're always pressing upward, but now we need to have the weight pull our shoulders down and back. And this is a great exercise to do. I do a lot of carries because I found that it keeps my shoulder stability a lot better when I'm pressing overhead and it also keeps my shoulders from impinging. So give these a shot whenever you can. Now, if you're asking yourself, which one's harder, the seated shoulder press or the push press? In my opinion, it's gonna be the push press. The big difference is on a seated shoulder press, you have the bench that you could press off of as leverage to keep your core stability. Plus the movement begins at the top. You can eccentrically load it down like a springboard and then it finishes at the top as well. Whereas this weight is sitting on your shoulders the entire time and that's the beginning spot. So, and it also ends at the shoulders as well. So either way, it is a very difficult movement. You have to use your core as well to balance the weight and you have to use your whole entire body if you want to be efficient and effective and lift the most amount of weight. And I'm glad that Nelson is here because there's actually two different styles, right? So Nelson is using a different style than Frank. Look at Frank's elbows. Frank's elbows are pointed down. So he's going to be feeling a lot more of that weight on his shoulders, right? Because since his elbows are pointed down and he's bringing it to his chest, he has to use his shoulders to stabilize it. Now look at Nelson's technique. Nelson's elbows are really out in front of him. And that's actually the more efficient way. If you look at Olympic weightlifters, they have their elbows out in front of them like Nelson does. Reason being is now the bar can rest on the shoulders and you don't have to use your shoulder stability in order to balance it. You could just let it rest on your shoulders and you can use a lot more leg drive. You can see Nelson is a lot more powerful than Frank is because he's using more legs. He's essentially jumping with the bar on his shoulders. It's flying up in the air and then he's catching it. Frank's using a lot more shoulders here, right? So he's basically using his shoulders to press the weight and he's using his legs as a guide. And with his elbows down like that, he really doesn't have much of a choice because if his elbows were a little bit higher like Nelson's here, then he could just rest that bar right there as his shoulders are up and out in front of him, you could actually rest that bar on your deltoids. And then Nelson, once he gets set, he springs his body, jumps, and then essentially catches the bar in the air. Now, which one's better, right? The push press is actually not the best movement to do if you're trying to work your shoulders. It's kind of the same argument I have for the bench press. The bench press is not a chest isolate bodybuilding movement. It's a compound movement where you can lift the most amount of weight with your chest being the primary muscle, but you're using your whole body. This is also a compound movement. You're using your whole entire body to get that bar overhead. You're using your core, your legs, your glutes, your hamstrings, your quads, 
your shoulders, your chest, your back to stabilize it, everything. So really, you want to be more efficient and overload the weight as much as you can and hit big weights above your head. And Nelson's technique is way more efficient to do that. And then isolate your shoulders with lighter weight and higher repetitions after this workout is done. Because you'll do about 80% of the work with the compound movement. And then all you got to do is just do some bodybuilding movement after that. So just like every video we've done before, five times five is going to be explained by our showgirls this time, Nelson and Frank together. And I've been explaining this over and over again, so I don't feel like I need to. But after we're done with this episode, I'm not going to be filming anymore. Frank's just going to keep adding five pounds every week as shown here until he gets to the final weeks. And once he's done, then he's going to test his one rep max. And that's going to be our next episode. So we're building up brick by brick, little by little, and we're taking our time because that's the safest and efficient way to do it. Now, Frank the Carnivore personally requested for me to program more exercises that would strengthen his lower back and his core. So he'll be able to perform compound movements just that much better. Little does he know there's one exercise that does both very well. Now let's pop into the assistance giant set and let me show you what I'm talking about. Now for the assistance giant set, I'm teaching Frank and Nelson how to do a yoke walk, right? And we had a couple of bystanders in the gym checking this out like, whoa, that looks pretty cool. Essentially, all you got to do is start from the rack that you just push pressed on and start with that weight. And then just, you know, I set about five meters away from the rack with that kettlebell. So they're walking five meters away and then they turn around and then they walk back. This is a great exercise to improve your back squat because you're in the back squat position and your core and your legs and your whole body as well, but it mainly your core. Walking with that weight that's uneven makes your core have to work over time. And this weight isn't heavy enough in my opinion, but because I didn't want them dying, right? Because this is a new and foreign uh, movement to them. I just told them after they're done with their strength giant set, do the yoke walks and that's gonna improve their core stability like crazy. And as we continue on with the assistance giant set, we're gonna be doing some dumbbell seated press. So same thing, seated press, but now we're doing dumbbells. Dumbbells is a much better option to use when it comes to building the shoulder because of that instability of the dumbbells. So this is a great exercise to do. And like I said earlier, you know, we did 80% of the work by doing the push press and overloading the shoulder stability uh, with that movement. And now we're doing some bodybuilding exercises to finish that off. So, and we're also going to be doing some heavy shrugs. I typically don't like doing this like alone. I like to do this like in farmer walks format. However, for this whole entire workout that I had programmed, this just kind of fit in better and wasn't going to be so taxing on the body since they were already doing a carry the yoke carry with the barbell. So I decided to program these instead. Fantastic. Now let's see the accessory giant set. For the accessory giant set, we were doing three rounds. And if you watch my channel long enough or even watch this docu-series long enough, you know that I really like side delt raises when it comes to building the shoulders and working that stability portion of it. And this exercise is great for that. And I also love to do tricep push-ups on this day as well to finish off my triceps, to get my chest a little bit involved. And since my shoulders are tired, they're gonna be working as well, but they're gonna be like the third muscle group that's working because the triceps and the chest are gonna be doing the work first. And then we're also gonna be doing some face pulls as well for shoulder health and stability and longevity. And that's gonna be the total workout for the day. Next time I see you guys, it'll be testing his one rep max at the end of this five times five program. So there you have it. A very good five times five in giant set format for shoulder day. Now Frank's going to continue to do his starting weight and he's going to move up in weight, which we're not going to film, unfortunately. But by the time this airs, we're going to test his one rep max at the end of the five weeks and we're gonna see if his numbers improved, which have been proven to work. It'll be a test to determine whether or not his carnivore diet will give him the nutrition and rebuild the muscle so that he can hit bigger numbers in the gym. Until next time, thank you.